So you're making progress with your moves on the pole and you're thinking, hmm, I'd like to take some shots from my socials to share with the world. But a professional photo shoot at a pole studio is a little out of your budget. You decide to DIY it instead. You set up your phone, you get into the groove and you get into your best poses or so you thought. And then all your photos turn out looking a little bit like this. Here is the thing. Even if they specialize in pole dance photography, professional will only make that much of a difference. It really starts with your moves. Hey everyone, my name is Tremaine. I have a great love for pole dancing and yoga. And on this channel, I'd like to share some of that love with you. Chances are, it's not the camera that makes your photos look bad. It's not knowing which poses work well for you and which don't. Particularly when you're starting out in pole dancing, when your list of moves is probably quite limited. So I give you three basic pole poses that you can do safely on your own and they will look great on social media. Now first, set up your camera so that you're fully in frame. I personally use a iPhone 12 Pro Max with a simple stand like this, and I always make sure the room is well lit. That is extremely important for your photos. And then I go through a pre-shoot checklist, just three really quick points. The first one, make sure that you're comfortably dressed. Now you're going to go into a pole pose, so obviously wearing something like long pants or longer shorts, it's not very practical because you wouldn't have a grip on the pole. Don't also wear clothes that are a bit too loose, uh, especially in your tops, unless you want a mini wardrobe malfunction for the world to see. Number two, provision for a good 90 minutes uh, in the space that you're going to be in, from doing about three poses, to setting up the camera, to warming up, to checking your videos and finishing the entire session. Because if you're going to be disturbed, then you're going to have to move your camera around and then things are just going to be a little bit messy. Last but not least, number three, and probably the most important point of all is to always pick poses that you're comfortable and confident in holding for at least three to five seconds. The best photo shoots don't always come from, for example, a very complicated move or a very complicated pose. It really comes from the pole dancer being able to hold that move very comfortably and confidently and smiling as well at the same time for that photo or a video. And if you're a bit more confident and you're going to go on a spinning pole, then make sure you can hold that pose for up to about eight to 10 seconds, which is about two revolutions around the pole in your pose. The first pose I'm gonna show you is called a cross knee sit. So you're gonna get into a pole sit from a climb so that you have a little bit of room from the floor to where you're sitting on the pole. Now, it's really important in the sit that your hips are not of the same height because then you're really gripping on for dear life. The trick to getting a very comfortable pole sit is really tilting your hip a little bit onto one side. In my case, I'm tilting to my left because my right is more dominant. So once you're in a pole sit, simply cross your legs and you're already in a cross knee sit. And from here, you can play with your hands, stretching them out, arching your back, pointing your toes. You can have one hand on the pole, one hand off. Remember to smile for the camera. Or you can even use an elbow grip if you're feeling more secure. The good thing about this pose is that it's pretty secure because you're going to have both uh, your knees crossing over with your pole sit to the side like this. So you really have quite a good grip for a while and you can play around with your legs as well. You know, straighten one, straighten both in the cross ankle sit, kind of like this. Look to the camera or not. So you're really in quite a secure position to be taking several shots of the same pose. The second pose I'm gonna show you is called a scissor sit. So it's quite similar in how you will get into it uh, from the cross knee sit. It's just that your legs are gonna be extended and they're actually not gonna to touch each other. So let me show you. So you're gonna get into a basic climb and then a sit. Remember, your hips are of different height. Now what you're gonna do is instead of crossing your knees like you did before, you're gonna straighten your legs and kind of open like in a triangle shape to give you scissors. And same, you can have your arms outstretched, lean back, remember to arch your back and point your toes. You can also have one arm on the pole and one arm out. Smile for the camera always. Now, if you're not so confident in this pose, you can actually uh, use your other hand to go in a grip like this around the bottom to also help stabilize you there. Remember, arching your back and pointing your toes at all times. Ta-da! And that was the second pose. The third pose is called a hood ornament or a figurehead pose. There are two variations to this pose depending on how advanced you are in your beginner stages and how comfortable you are. 
The first variation is from the ground. So you're gonna stand with your back against the pole. It's kind of in the middle of my spine and my back. You're gonna put one leg up with your calf kind of around the pole a little bit. You're gonna tiptoe, because you always want pointed toes. The arm that's not in front of the camera, you're gonna go in a cup grip. So behind you like this and then extend the arm that's in front of the camera behind. So you get a really nice elegant shape. You can smile at the camera, point your toes, your hands, or you can do one for an arch back where you lean your chest forward, a bit like a, one of those figureheads on a ship. Or you can go for the elbow on top, bend this way. So obviously in this pose, it's also a lot safer because you're still standing on the ground. It's very important to point your toes at both ends, as you, as you tiptoe, because it does not look very pretty if you have your foot like this. The second variation of the hood ornament of figurehead pose is a spinning one. It is essentially a right thigh hook with your hands like this or like this. There is a bit of grip in your underarm here so make sure that you're actually comfortable in this pose before you attempt it. Because if you get into a spinning pole and you're not very comfortable, it's 100% sure your photos won't turn out looking so pretty. So to get into this pose, I simply hook my, so my right leg, because it's my dominant foot, lift myself up whilst I kick off with my left foot, like this. Hug the pole. Smile. Change my arms. And dismount safely. This more advanced beginner version, you really need to be comfortable in your right leg grip as well as a spinning pole. Because if you're holding on for 10 seconds spinning, okay, okay. Getting a little afraid. You might get a little bit nauseous. Oh, hello. Okay. Sick as a dog now. Okay. Just a boy. And that was it. Give those a go and let me know how your photos turned out. If you have seen other pole poses or pole moves that you would like me to break down or you think you would like to try, please leave them in the comment section below. And if you would like to give a hand at spinning or learning how to spin and getting confident in spinning, check out this video here. Thank you for spending some of your time and energy with me today. I will see you in the next video. Subscribe!